One thing that happens as we get older is we make more memory errors and make more mistakes, and those can be really good learning events and something that children probably don't enjoy or challenge themselves with frequently enough. So one thing we learn from are, are errors, and by training or incorporating errors, people can become better learners because they know their strengths and they know their weaknesses. One way to do this is to try and teach someone a concept or something that you've recently learned. So if you think you know how to swim or hit a golf ball, you might feel that you're quite confident, but then when you try and teach it or talk to someone else, you might see this blank look on their face, <laughs> meaning that they're not understanding what you know. And so you need to come up with new examples or other ways of communicating. And that then points out what knowledge gaps you have in your own explicit knowledge of this skill. So this ability to teach or take someone else's perspective can enhance learning considerably. I think as we get older, we might actually get better at this because we focus again on what's important. Instead of telling someone 10 things they need to change in their golf swing, you want to focus on the most important thing or maybe two things the person can work on. Ask the person what sorts of errors are they making so that you can focus on these errors as opposed to just trying to correct things as quickly as possible. One thing we've noticed is that when people are engaged in active learning, they do much better than passive learning. So to give an example, people have seen the Apple logo thousands, millions of times, but we've recently shown in a study that people are actually quite bad at recalling exactly the features of the logo because you've seen it many times, but you haven't done anything with it. And it's the same with name learning. People introduce themselves and say, you know, my name is Alan, but you won't do anything with that information. And as a result, you'll quickly forget it. So if you don't engage in some sort of activity, some sort of processing of this information, it's susceptible to very rapid forgetting. And this is especially true as we get older. We're often distracted, and that can have a big impact on what we remember. So when we're multitasking or thinking about what we're going to have for dinner, we then forget to close the car door. And sometimes these are small consequences, but sometimes they can be big consequences. Like if it's a hot day and you forget that you have your infant in the back seat because you're rushed and trying to get to work. So one thing we can do is really try and be more present and focus on what we're doing right now and not worry so much about some of the memory errors that can occur. So forgetting someone's name, you can always ask them again. Um, things like that can be very uh, stressful, especially as we get older. People are under stereotype threat that they feel that, gosh, my memory is getting worse because I'm getting older. And that can have real implications for how people then perform on a memory test. It's the same with um, girls and math anxiety. So when you activate the stereotype threat, it can have implications that are far reaching. So when we think more that I'm distracted, that's why I'm not remembering things well, as opposed to I'm getting older, I'm not remembering things well. We can have, take some control over how well we remember information. Another example of being distracted, which happens to many of us, is we walk into a room and then forget why we wanted to get into that room or what we were trying to get in that room. <laughs> And that happens not just when we're older, but when we're younger. Um, one explanation for this is context. We're going from room A to room B, and there's a context change. And now those cues that were in room A are no longer there. And I spoke to one older adult, and she said the best thing she does when that happens is she just walks back into the other room, and then usually it comes back to her. And she also reminded me she's also getting exercise by doing this every day because she'll walk back and forth between rooms several times a day. But she's not anxious about these things, and she knows these memory challenges have been happening to her ever since she turned probably 30 or 40. So reducing anxiety associated with memory errors and, in fact, making mistakes can be very helpful or beneficial because we learn more about how our memory works and how it doesn't, how we might want to selectively remember important information and it's almost a paradox. How can an older adult who can't remember a name of a person they recently met still remember to kind of mail a package to their granddaughter a week early before her birthday? So clearly it's not that just memory gets worse as we get older. There's changes in goals, and we become more selective. And that might be something that makes older adults more efficient learners in a skill that, that younger students could benefit from as well.